guys, it's Arielle. I'm here in my new apartment in Brooklyn and today I wanted to make a video about my New York Academy of Art portfolio that was accepted and the reason why I want to make this video is because when I was looking to apply to this school I couldn't find any videos on like the application process. I found a lot of videos for like undergrad institutions but applying for programs for a master's is really different and so today i'm going to share with you my experience and my accepted portfolio for the new york academy of art so the first thing i want to talk about i have my phone here i'm gonna read off some of the application supporting materials okay so you have to have five figure drawings that are drawn from life. Um, I submitted four drawings that were done over like a long period. I did four drawings that were done over three days and then I submitted one drawing that I finished in like 20 minutes. And then you have to have up to 15 um, additional images so you don't have to have 15 but I put in 15 whenever I apply for applications for grants or for colleges you always want to have like the max amount of something because they don't want to see that you are like not trying so if you only submit 10 images they're gonna be like where's the other five my four drawings that I did were done in pencil and prismacolor and then the one drawing was in pen and they were also really small my paintings are large scale so i don't really draw that much but the point of me going to this program is that i want to improve my drawing because i think that it's important and fundamental for painters to be able to draw from life so let's continue on for your cv a lot of people don't know how to write CVs. They are very specific. The New York Academy of Art is very specific on how you write your CV. So what do I mean by that? That means that you can't just write your CV any old way. It has to be specifically formatted or they won't accept it. I have my CV. I'm just going to read it off my website. You're going to have your education at the top your most current education and then your like least current so for me i had two because i was in another master's program for art history before i applied to this to the new york academy of art so i had my current masters at the top and then i had my bfa underneath of that so next you're gonna have your solo exhibitions then you're gonna have your group exhibitions then you're going to have your awards and recognitions, and then you're going to have your publications. Well, you might be thinking, Arielle, I don't really have that many things to put on my CV. You probably do. You probably do have a lot of things that you can put on your CV. You're just not thinking that it's important enough to add it. For example, like a county art show, you might think, oh, Nobody cares about the county art show. I shouldn't put it on my CV. Yes, you should. If, if there is no title for your group show, literally just make one up. For every one of these categories, for your solo exhibitions, group exhibitions, awards, it's also going to be in chronological order. So the most recent exhibition is going to be at the top, so on and so forth. If you're wondering how to get publications, it is very time consuming, but it can be done and it can also be done for free. When I submit my work to journals and to magazines, I pretty much never pay. I think that paying for publications in magazines is really fucked up because I'm already super poor and a lot of artists are really poor and I understand that normally people that are running these magazines, the reason why they need to be compensated for your application is so that they can keep it running and keep the platform. But for me personally, I don't have enough money to keep giving people $30 every time I want to apply to something. 
I only apply for publications that are free. How do you find publications? Well, every state is different. You can um, check your like state art, what's the right word I'm looking for? For example, like New York has the New York Foundation for the Arts. Every state has something that's like that, pretty sure. I have lived in Maryland and in New York and both states have that. Well, I couldn't tell you for like the other states that are in the middle of nowhere, you might actually not really have anything. But you can just Google art journals, submissions, art magazine submissions, and you can just keep going through and a lot of magazines will have submissions that are on a rolling basis, but then some magazines will only accept submissions like once a year or twice a year. Moving along. So for your references, you have to have three references. I chose to have my painting professor as my first reference, which I think anybody that's not like a problem. I think that you should have someone that you've worked with the closest at your university write you one of your recommendations. I took six classes with this professor and he was um, pretty much the only professor that I studied under because he was the professor for advanced painting. So it was really important. He was also the head of the department of painting. So it was really important that I had his recommendation. Now, the other two recommendations that I had I understand might not be possible for other people to have. That being said, there's nothing wrong with having three of your own professors at your university write your recommendation as long as they are artists and they are in the art department. Don't have your English teacher write you a recommendation for your application at the New York Academy of Art. They have to be art professors specifically either in drawing, painting, or sculpture, depending on the concentration that you're in. Well, the reason why I'm saying that not everybody might have the resources to have my recommendations is because I had an alumni from the school write me a recommendation and a successful artist in Brooklyn that I met at an artist talk that I was really lucky to become friends with. She also wrote me a recommendation. So I had my professor, an artist, and, and an alumni write me my recommendation. Now there are ways to become friends with people who are professional artists. For example, I did not know this girl that was, she's not a girl, she's a woman. <laughs> I did not know this woman that wrote me my recommendation for the New York Academy of Art at first. She was somebody that I followed on Instagram and I really admired and I was engaging with her page a lot you know, complimenting her work and talking about her work and eventually we just became friends and she really loves my paintings, which I thought was crazy because I looked up to her and I even did like some school projects on her work and we ended up just becoming friends. And the kind of, the same kind of thing happened with the other recommender that I had. You know, she gave her lecture. I was really interested in her work. I came up to her afterward um, spoke to her a lot about her paintings, then she came into my studio and critiqued my work, and then when I moved to New York, she invited me to come to her studio, and then we just have become good friends from that. So it is all about making connections and being eccentric and being bold, and I know that that might be hard for some people, and it used to be really hard for me. I believe it or not, used to be really shy. But you have to kind of think about it like this. Everyone is scared to have someone come up and talk to them. But for the most part, I mean, if you're at a lecture, the artist is not going to be like, oh, get away from me. Don't ask me questions. They want you to ask them questions. So you, you don't want to be annoying and like blow up their Instagram when they're, you know, not posting anything. And, you know, you don't want to be rude, but if you see an opportunity and they're already in a setting where they're, like, looking for you to ask them questions, you should take advantage of that.
The most difficult part of an application I think that art students have a problem with is writing the essay. For me personally, I took so many art history classes that I could have qualified for an art history minor, but I also took a lot of English classes. So I'm really good at writing. It's one of my strong suits and I actually present my paintings with writing, but a lot of art students have trouble writing. So I'm here to explain to you how to write the perfect essay. So for the New York Academy of Art, you're writing a one page essay. I'm going to break down my essay into themes. I'm not going to just put my essay on here because I don't want you to just copy what I wrote. It's really important to be yourself and for your writing style to come out. Institutions can tell when you fake things, when you lie, when you have other people write your stuff. You know, I'm sure you already know this, but I'm just telling you again. Don't plagiarize. The first paragraph of your essay should be a personal story. It should be a story about why you love painting, how you became an artist. You want it to be something personal that's not necessarily showing off any like achievement, but maybe like painting in your younger years or maybe you didn't know anything about art until you got into college and then you discovered art, something like that. So you want your first paragraph to be personal and it's going to be your introduction into your artist statement. So your artist statement is going to be your second paragraph. Some artists don't know how to write artist statements. <laughs> um, so your artist statement is going to be a generalized statement, kind of leading people in the right direction, but not telling them what your paintings are exactly about. I will read you my artist statement. Also, you should be writing your artist statement in third person. This essay is one page, so your artist statement in general should only ever be a paragraph long. Here is my artist statement. Ariel Tesserero is a painter who creates bright, large-scale contemporary portraiture exploring women's conflicts with eating and sexuality. She uses a variety of medias including photography, video, and collage. Food represents physical and emotional nourishment, objects of both dread and intense desire. Food, sex, love, and power fulfill needs of attachment, affinity, and belonging. Tesserero examines individual expectations of happiness, self-esteem, morality, and beauty through scholarly research combined with her own poetic, bold narratives. If you're sitting there like, bitch, what the fuck? How am I supposed to write something that's like that? It takes a long time to write an artist statement. I think that you don't have to have an artist statement that makes it seem like you're way smarter than everyone else. I think it's better actually to write artist statements that people can comprehend and they can relate to. My third paragraph is talking about my inspiration for my work and like talking about my references, references to art history, um, music, poetry, those kinds of things. The paragraph after that is talking about how why is the New York Academy of Art the school that you want to go to. They want to know what classes at their school are going to be helpful to you and your practice, what professors are going to be helpful to you and your practice, and what you're going to do when you graduate from their school. How is their school helping you become a better artist? Normally, I do rule of thumb three, so I'll write three classes I want to take, and then I also wrote about three alumni that I admire. And because you only have a page, you're writing like a sentence per thing. So like, this class will help me improve blah 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 blah, but it can't, like it has to sound good. Make sure, I would take whatever, if you don't think you're good at writing, Take your paper to the writing center, take it to one of your professors, and ask them to look over it to make sure that your shit is straight. And my final paragraph is about what I'm going to do when I graduate from the school. And make sure you have a good concluding sentence. 
if you have like this essay and then you just abruptly end it without a good concluding thing they're gonna be like this bitch needs to go back to high school she doesn't know how to write a paper so it's very important now we're going to talk about the series of paintings that I submitted to the New York Academy of Art. I think when you submit, you also have to submit um, your website. So having a website and going into a master's program, you have to have one. Um, I do my website through Wix and I pay for the domain. So my domain is arieltesserero.com. I don't think the domain necessarily matters. I've seen some people who are in master's programs who have like it'll be, say their name and then like .wix.com or whatever. But you definitely need a website. It's super, super easy. All you have to have is your, well, you can go on my website to see how my website is laid out, but mine is kind of different because I have my music and my art. The two main important things that you have on your website is your paintings that are separated by dates and then also you can put your CV on your website. It'll just make it like way easier than having every time like you apply to a program or a grant or a residency, you don't have to keep rewriting your shit. You can just put, give them your website and it has everything on it already. So they also wanna know your Instagram handle. Make sure that you have an Instagram specifically for your art, not just your personal Instagram mixed with your art. My Instagram for my art is Ariel Tesoro Studio, and I post about reference photos for my paintings. I post like progress pictures of my paintings. I post like my publications and press and things like that. For the paintings that I chose for my application, I guess if you're watching this video, maybe you're kind of already close to your senior year, so this might be too late for you, but if you're watching this and it's the beginning of your undergraduate career, listen to me. Listen to me. You. Yes, you. Need to think about a series of work. Colleges, grants, magazines nobody wants to see a bunch of random ass paintings sent to them with some vague artist statement you have to pick an idea and you have to stick with it if you don't have an idea bitch you better google it because you can have a series of work and then think of an idea later you can like bs it sort of you have to make it sound like it's important so for example the beginning of my undergrad i was like i kind of had an idea of what i wanted to do i knew i wanted to make like feminist art i wanted to make work about our bodies how we're portrayed beauty those are all things i'm interested in so at first i was kind of leaning more towards like mental illness and uh, how we're perceived in social media and stuff like that. I mean, even my senior exhibition was kind of something totally not even with that. It was like about identity and um, technology. <laughs> so, but it is also the same. So even though like I painted about, I painted about like color theory and personality and then I painted about mental illness and then I painted about technology and poetry and like writing but it's all kind of about identity how women are perceived by others and our like self-esteem and so on I also did some paintings about people eating so I decided to change my artist statement to focus more on women eating and that's the series that I'm doing. I don't know if I'm going to be able to add pictures in this in this bitch. Am I even allowed to curse? Oh, this is going to be so bad. 
Oh my gosh. I'm gonna have to like, <laughs> I'm gonna just stick the stuff up here. And if you wanna see my paintings, this is just my website. Um, this is kind of common sense, but only put the paintings that you're proud of on your website because they're going to look at your website. And so pretty much, I think all the paintings I submitted are on my website. The only things that aren't on my website are my drawings, but I can show you the drawings I did too. So I don't know if I'm going to be able to add pictures into this video because I'm really technologically illiterate. So I'm just going to put stuff up to the screen, and if you guys want to see the clear picture, just go on my website. Okay, I'm just going to scroll. Oh my gosh. So all my paintings are really big. Um, Like this one's 36 by 48, this one's 36 by 36, 36 by 48, this one's small, this one's 16 by 20. This one's 48 by 48, I made the canvas myself. 36 by 48, 30 by 40, 16 by 20, 36 by 36. These are all ones from 2000 and 2018. Then 36 by 36, 24 by 48. This one's 48 by 60. 36 by 36, okay. Oh no, I submitted this one. This one's, I think, 18 by 24. This one's something around there. It's either 16 by 20 or 18 by 24 too. Okay. And that one I made recently. So these are all of the paintings that I submitted. Yes. Ah. Yes. Anyways, I hope that this video somewhat helps you. If it doesn't, I'm really sorry that you just wasted 36 minutes of your day. When I'm done editing this video, it probably won't be 36 minutes, but it will still be pretty long. I hope that you get accepted to the school of your dreams because the New York Academy of Art really was the school of my dreams. It was the school that I wanted to go to since even before I was in undergrad, I wanted to go to this school. All my favorite artists went to the school and then I finally got accepted and I cried. I cried so hard because I thought my art sucked and it does but somehow they still accepted me so I guess it doesn't suck that bad. I feel like Lana Del Rey. San Francisco. <laughs> the look I was going for today was like, well, I wasn't sure at first. It ended up turning into like Stevie Nicks, sort of like Lana Del Rey ish. So I think this is the end of the video give it a thumbs up if I sort of helped you and if I didn't please don't give me a thumbs down because then I'll be really sad I'm hopefully going to be making some more videos about what it's like doing fine art in quarantine in person because all of my classes are going to be in person apparently there's like plexiglass walls that they put up and we have to wear gloves and obviously masks and things like that so I'm gonna be making some videos about that and hopefully I don't get coronavirus because that would suck. All right, have a great day guys. Watch the rest of my videos and stream Dear Diary.